Hi, Chuck Fassberg here. In this webinar, I'd like to talk with you about real estate photography. So let's get started. Here's where the story starts. This is just outside Las Vegas, Nevada, out in the desert. It was 114 degrees. The day before, we were scouting locations, and for this photograph, none of the locations were near the parking lot, and I got heat exhaustion. I was able to get it together and finish up the photo shoot and get everything done and, and actually did a really great job for the client. But on the plane flight back, my wife and I were talking and I was thinking that after 30 years as a professional photographer, I'm not sure that we could continue doing all these on-location shots out in the hot sun, these 14-hour days. In this case, it was 114 degrees out and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do those when I get older. So we needed a plan. So we made the plan that when I reached a certain age, I was going to become a professional full-time realtor along with my wife, Pat. She'd been a realtor forever. So I was going to join her brokerage. And I went to school in secret. When the day came, I made a big announcement. I didn't take another professional photography assignment since. And I became a top producing realtor earning more certifications than the top 1% of realtors in the country. My wife and I sell millions and millions of dollars of real estate every year, and we've been very successful. And I found that the same things that made me a good photographer are the same things that made me a good realtor. But this makes me uniquely qualified to talk to you about real estate photography because I've been on both sides. 98% of buyers use photos to decide whether or not they're going to see a property. Homes with high quality photos sell 50% faster than those that don't. Homes with high quality photos sell for $3,000 to $19,000 more in the $200,000 to $1 million range. So the question that I know you're asking yourself as a photographer is, can I make money? Could I make $100,000 a year doing real estate photography? And the answer is yes, and I'm going to prove it to you later on. But let's start off with learning a little bit more about real estate photography. And I'd like to start off with what I call the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to focus on the ugly in this one. These are actual photographs that I got from the multiple listing service. These are not just to be funny. These are actual photos, and they are not funny. Here's the first one. In this one, we can see that the agent didn't even bother to get out of their car to take this photograph. Now, I admit this probably isn't the best listing this agent's ever gotten in their life, but this is a travesty. You could at least get out of the car. Now, as photographers, we all know that lens flare is very popular right now, but it doesn't have any place in real estate photography. And you can even see that the agent tried to get rid of the flare by blocking with their hand, but they didn't quite manage to get their hand out of the frame. So, of course, if you don't want to get a lens flare from the sun, shoot it when there's no light at all. This absolutely does not show the property in a positive way. I don't think anybody would want to go view this. Now, when you're out doing your real estate photography, attention to detail is vital. In this case, just paying attention to the pillows would have changed everything. And also, that, that little uh, baby crib over there in the corner, that probably could have been moved and would have made for a much nicer looking photograph. It's important in your real estate photographs that you don't show up in the photograph. And there are a couple other major errors in this photograph. All the toiletries, the, the soap and everything, those could have all easily been removed to make this a much better photograph. Now next is one of my pet peeves. Put the toilet seat down. Everybody knows you're supposed to put the seat down, and it's twice as important when it comes to real estate photography. Get those seats down. Don't leave the toilet paper rolls sitting on top of the toilet either. Also, it's a good idea to remove any items that, that might just be weird from the property. Now, I don't know about you, but 
I'm not sure a lot of folks might want to visit this piece of property. Also, you want to make sure that you show the amenities of the property very clearly. You want to show what's really great about that property. And this photograph, well, it, it really doesn't show anything. And, and it's not even in focus either. Here's a few other tips for you. Remove all personal items from the photo. That, that means family photos, uh, things that are specific to the family, and family members too as well. Here's another one that I saw in the MLS. You won't believe this one. Don't have people in the photos. It's just not a good idea and cleaning up some of that clutter would have helped. Now when it comes to people, the same thing goes for pets. <laughs> I don't know who shot this, but it, it's just not a great way to show this property in its best possible way. And um, this one here, I'll let you draw your own conclusions. We all know what that dog's doing. We could have waited a minute to get a better shot of this. And also that blue bag there that, well, nobody really knows what's in that, but it's uh, definitely something that could have been removed. And this would have been a much better photograph with very, very little effort. Now, as photographers, what we need to know is what our clients want. So we're going to talk about this a little bit, and there are several different things that agents need from us as photographers. The first thing I'd like to talk with you about is drone photography. Uh, drone photography is incredibly popular. It's not necessary on all properties, but it's really great to show features, like in this case, the property's proximity to the water, showing the dock, and you know, showing all the nice trees around. If it's showing proximity to water or a golf course or some other great amenity, drone photography is a must. If it's just a regular house, showing what the roof of the house looks like isn't really beneficial, so it's not going to be useful on every single image. Now, another thing that's been increasingly popular, and it's become vital in my opinion, is three-dimensional virtual reality. And the slang term for this is Matterport. And Matterport's actually a brand name for the equipment that's used to create this. Here we have an ordinary listing that was shot with a Matterport camera. And what it creates is a very realistic 3D view of the image. So it starts off here in what they call the dollhouse view where you, you can look, you can take a look at the floor plan, how things are laid out. But what's more important is you can actually do a digital walkthrough of the property. So we're going to start right here at the front door. Inside the house, we can take a look around. There's a dining area. We're standing right inside the front door. Looking back here, let's, uh, let's take a look over here. We can show the kitchen area. We can walk into that very easily. Look around. Everything is very easy to see. It's, they're nice and clear and bright. Looking over here, it's the closest thing you can possibly get to actually walking through a house. And you can see here, you can just walk right through, see everything just as clear as can be. You can look inside the closet. It's really, really simple. It has some other great features too, like measuring. So let, let me get down here. Like just for example, let's say that we wanted to know how wide this hallway was. They actually have a measuring tool where you can click and we'll just measure from here to here. So that's three feet, one inches where I measured. So we'll just check that off. But you can see that it has a lot of really great tools. So we'll go back to the dollhouse view and that's how this whole Matterport system works. This works extremely well. And at the time that I'm recording this, we're at a point where visiting houses isn't very easy because of quarantines. 
this has really been a godsend. Matter of fact, just this week, we sold a $1 million house, sight unseen to people, because of this technology. The people are not going to see the house until after they've closed on it, but this, along with a video that we did, walking through the property with them for three hours, was sufficient to give them all the information they needed to buy a million dollar piece of property without even stepping foot in it. Here's the camera that does the Matterport images. It's a really amazing piece of technology. It stands on a tripod. It's got lenses that point on three different axes, and it also sends out infrared rays that measure and map the 3D image as the camera is rotating. So it's capturing photography and also getting all the spatial data all at the same time. And the camera itself cost $3,395 at the time of I'm recording this. And then there's also a monthly service involved that's $9.99 on up to $309 a month, depending on how many you're doing a month. Now, according to Matterport, it takes 38 minutes to shoot a 2,000 square foot house. I've seen it done that quickly, but for most people, it takes a little bit closer to an hour to do one. And later on, I'll show you how much the average prices are for this, so you can make some determinations on how much money you can earn by doing this kind of work. Now, there are some rules. There are things that govern real estate photography that differ greatly from other kinds of commercial photography. And here in Florida, where I live, Florida Statute 475, the Multiple Listing Service, and also the Realtor Code of Ethics all have a hand in governing what is acceptable and what's not acceptable for real estate photography. So let me give you some overall guidelines. Here are things that you can do. You can add virtual furnishings, things in the exterior, like for example, potted plants, patio furniture, anything that could have been actually picked up and placed there, you can add. A few things you can't do, however, is you, you can't enhance permanent things. Like for example, you can't fix up the roof or change the front door. You're not allowed to change the paint color of the outside of the house. If there was some work being done to the house, you're not allowed to complete that work digitally. You're also not allowed to add landscaping or change the lawn. Maybe there's some bald spots in the lawn. You're not allowed to fix those up. You're also not allowed to add scenic views or landmarks or remove things like power lines or power poles. It's all about being a fair, accurate, realistic representation of the property as it sits on the day that you photographed it. Now let's talk about the interior. Here are a few things you can do. You can modify the furniture in there and the decor. You can add new decor, what we call virtual staging, which I'll talk to you about in a little bit. Those are all things that you can do. Things that you could physically put in the room or remove from the room. Those are all acceptable as long as you tell people that it's been put in there. A few things you can't do is you can't cover up eyesores like like holes in the ceiling or the wall or cover up exposed wiring. If there's damage or outdated flooring, you're not allowed to change that. You can't add or, or enhance the view out of the windows. You're not allowed to make the room appear larger than it really is. Also, you're not allowed to change the paint color of the walls or swap out different kitchen appliances or countertops or things of that nature. It's all about being honest. So really, it boils down to this. We don't want to misrepresent the property in any way. Nothing makes people matter than to show up to a property and find out that it doesn't look anything like the photos. It's way worse, and they've wasted a trip out there. It really makes people upset, and it can lead to uh, reporting a violation for the realtor that posted them. Also, your retouching has to be very limited. It's okay to remove a trash can from the front of the house, but it's not okay to remove a fire hydrant from the front yard. It's okay to clean up some toys that were left around in the house, but it's not okay to fix a hole in the wall. Also, one thing to keep in mind, 
just a plain old straight front view of the house is required by the multiple listing service as the first photo. So be sure that you get that shot done and that it looks really good. Now, as far as what your clients want from you, personally, it's simple. And I shouldn't even have to say these things, but you'd be surprised. Show up on time. Be pleasant to work with. Be efficient with your work. The realtor usually has to be there at the property with you, and their time is valuable. It's, most realtors are very busy, and they have to stand there while you're doing the work, so get your work done efficiently. And also, it's important for you to deliver the photographs quickly. Most of the time, the agent has an agreed upon date that they're going to list those that piece of property. And if they miss that date, there could be some consequences for them. So that actual promise date has to be met. So when you're scheduling with the realtor, make sure that you know what the agreed upon date for listing is so that you can help them meet that. Sometimes it's very quick and other times it's weeks away. So it's valuable for you to know that. Now let's talk about doing the actual work. Here's what I recommend. Get out there early. This is all about efficiency. Get the exteriors all done before the agent gets there. And shoot the photos in the order that you would walk through. This is, makes it very efficient and it also makes it easier for your editing because the agent is going to want the photos numbered in an appropriate order so that kind of makes sense. So when they upload them to the multiple listing service, they don't have to sit there and rearrange everything. Show the features and amenities very clearly. Now here's an example of just a ordinary house and how I would walk through this property. So of course you would start with the entryway showing the, the front patio, the front door, the view just inside the front door, and then showing, in this case, over to the right, the dining area, then showing the living area, which is open to the kitchen, and just doing a walk around. I'd like you to study this slide when you get some time and look through this and see how efficient this is for a walkthrough. Even though there are 26 different photographs involved in shooting this house, they're all done very quickly and efficiently. And that way, they'll all be in the right order when you go back and start editing. Here's an actual listing that I'd like to show you. It's a nice condo out on the beach and you can see the very first shot is a front view of the property, at least as much of a front view as is possible the way this property is laid out. We're showing the, the front entrance as we walk up, just inside the front door, and again, we're, we're showing amenities. The biggest amenity for this piece of property is the view of the water. So we want to make sure we show that as much as we can. Here we go again. There's a few more steps inside the front door. So we're taking a look at the whole vista of the dining and living area. And again, showing what's really great about this piece of property. A few more steps showing a different view of the living area we turn around here's the kitchen so as you're walking through with these photos you can kind of get a sense of how the property is laid out here we go to the other end of the room so you can kind of get the context well there's the kitchen okay so we were standing right here in the last photograph looking this way continuing walking looking out across the balcony and then we take a look at the master bedroom. These are all in the proper order that they should be for the multiple listing service. More of the master bedroom, and then walking into the master bath. You can see here we're very clearly showing that there are two sinks and showing the nice shower. Notice the photographer is not visible in any of the mirrors. In this case, they were retouched out because it was impossible to do the photograph without being in the mirror. So retouched out makes it look beautiful. Let's look at some more. 
the laundry room again showing how nice it is showing the nice cabinetry and the the countertops and the nice appliances the other bedrooms again showing just as clearly as possible and one other little tip for you is make sure the ceiling fans are turned off whenever possible now we go outside showing the amenities of the property showing the pool showing the back side of the property looking out from the balcony showing just outside the back and then showing the view from the balcony and this is really what that property is all about is the beautiful view out over the Gulf of Mexico and then finally we got drone shots showing its proximity to the beach because it's very important to show that this piece of property is literally right on the beach so these drone photos show this very clearly some more drone photos showing its proximity to other bodies of water and also adjacent pieces of property so you can see that these photographs show us very clearly a good sense of what this property looks like so that we can determine whether or not we want to go out and visit it in person and this is particularly useful for out-of-town buyers and here in the area that I live in 20% of the properties bought by people who live either out of town or out of the country so the photographs are vitally important and a lot of agents don't realize this it's your job as a photographer to make sure they understand this so that they can hire you and I'll expand on that a little bit more in the upcoming section now let's talk about how to get the work how to actually sell yourself how to get the work from in this case we're going to start off talking about real estate agents because they're the most easy target for you for sales but there are others and we'll talk about those as well but let's start off by looking again at some statistics that you can use to sell yourself to agents because some agents don't realize how important professional photography is they think well, I'm just going to save a little bit of money. I'll go out there, I'll do them myself with my phone, and it'll be good enough. Well, good enough isn't good enough. Even in a seller's market where property is selling very quickly, a lot of agents will tell you, I don't need professional photography because it. all I have to do is put it on the multiple listing service and it's going to sell quickly because there's a shortage of homes. Well, that may be true, but it's that agent's job to get as much money for that property as possible and professional photography helps that happen so I'm going to prove it you're going to use these statistics to help it help you prove to agents why you're so valuable all right now we talked about this a little bit earlier but we're going to review these buyers spend 60 percent of their time looking at listing photos according to the National Association of Realtors I think that statistic is low I think they spend a lot more time than that but that's what the National Association of Realtors reports homes with high quality photographs sell 50 percent faster that means that there's more money for the seller because they don't have as high a holding costs for the property it means that the agent gets paid more quickly Homes with high quality photographs get 61% more views online. That's according to Redfin. 83% of buyers cited pictures as being very important. Homes with high quality photos sell for between $3,000 and $19,000 more in the $200,000 to $1 million range. That's again according to the National Association of Realtors and also marketleader.com now here's where it becomes real to the agent homes with high quality photos yield 180 to 660 dollars more commission to that agent realtors that use high quality photographs get better listings that's a known fact and here's something that most agents don't know is that the agents who outsource through photography earn twice as much commission as those that don't. That's according to Inman. Now here in the state of Florida where I live, there are 221,000 agents here in the state of Florida. Now not all of them are doing a lot of business, but that's a tremendous amount of potential business for you. 
Imagine only getting a tiny, tiny percent of the realtors that are out there. You'd have a good business. Just last year, there were 28,507 new agents come on the scene. And in my opinion, those are the good people to go after because they're, they don't have somebody that they're using yet. They're ones that they want to be successful. They want to set their, they want to make their mark. They want to get out there, be successful, and you can help them as a photographer. The new agents are the best ones to start off with. Now, they're not going to be big clients at first, but they're going to grow. So you need to think long term. Now, here in the Tampa Bay area where I live, a good place to meet these new agents is at the Pinellas Realtor Association over on Tampa, the Greater Tampa Realtors Association, and a little bit south of where I live, the Realtor Association of Sarasota and Manatee. I've got their website addresses on here. I'd recommend you start going to their events, and I'd highly recommend that you look into becoming an affiliate of these particular boards because being an affiliate gets you more access to their membership and they will actually actively help you and help promote you. So I recommend getting involved with these organizations. Now obviously we've been focusing really heavy on real estate agents during this conversation because those are the most common people that buy our services as photographers. So real estate agents and brokers, those are the people you're probably going to go after first. But I'd also like you to consider that there are a lot of other sources for income, like builders, architects, interior designers, contractors, painters, home stagers, landscape professionals, suppliers, pool installers, tradesmen, remodelers, and furniture and cabinet sellers. These are all people that need your services. So there's a tremendous amount of business out there for you. And also don't forget about ancillary services that people will need in addition to your regular real estate photography. Here are a couple examples. You know, when you take a look at realtors' business cards or websites, you know, you take a look at their shots and it's like, well, that's, that's them 20 years ago, but they need new headshots and they need good headshots. Not ones that they did in the office with their phone. They need good shots. So they look like real professionals. And also, another thing that you may want to consider, if you look down in the lower left, is that my wife Pat and I, we hire a photographer every, about every two months or so, we go out and do some lifestyle photography shots so that we've got lots of things to post on the internet about our lifestyle so people can kind of get to know a little bit about us. You can't always have everything be about, hey, go buy a house, you know, call me if you want a list. People need to get to know you. So lifestyle shots, think about it in terms of being an internet influencer. So this is another thing that you can sell to your clients so that you can get more work for them and help them to be more successful. So it's truly a win-win. Now let's talk about getting the work done. Obviously, it's better to work smarter. We all know about that. Now people commonly ask about HDR, High Dynamic Range Photography. And I'll explain what that's all about in case you don't know in just a second. But I'll tell you this, shooting things in HDR is a lot easier than setting up lighting. And like I said before, doing things efficiently is the key to earning money doing real estate photography. So let's take a look at a photograph here. This was taken with a professional camera and it's a decent photo, but here's what it's lacking. It doesn't show the best part of this property. Just outside that window is the Gulf of Mexico and the beach. It's beautiful, but you'd never know it by this photograph because in order to get an exposure where you can see the inside of the condo, the outside's blown out. So that's no good. We need to get both things. Now, if we exposed for the outside, you already know as a photographer that, well, then the inside would be too dark. So you can't have it both ways in just one shot. 
That's where HDR, high dynamic range photography, comes in. Here's how HDR works. In its simplest form, it's three photographs. One that's too dark, one that's normal, and one that's too light. You use the one that's too light to open up the shadow areas, and you use the one that's too dark to bring down the highlight areas that are getting blown out. So let me give you a comparison here. Take a look at the difference between this shot and this one, which was shot HDR. And this was also straightened up to correct the perspective using Lightroom. So here's the single shot. Here it is in HDR. So it's much, much better. We can really see what this property is all about. And it looks a lot closer to the way it would look to the eye when we're visiting. Now, as far as HDR goes, there's a lot of software that you can use for this. The two that are the most common presently are Photomatix and Aurora HDR. Personally, I'm using Aurora HDR. They both do a fine job. There are others also. I haven't used them myself, but I'm sure they do a great job. The idea is, is that you want to be able to show what's outside the property as well as what you're showing inside. Now, I mentioned earlier that agents that outsource their photography earn a lot more than their counterparts who do not. I'd like you to consider outsourcing a few things. For example, sometimes you got to get the shot, but the weather's not that good, but there's, you just have to do it. Well, there's a company that I use a lot called Box Brownie, B O X. B-R-O-W-N-I-E. They do enhancing of photographs. They do virtual staging. Any possible kind of improvement to a real estate photo, they do. They do it extremely inexpensively, and they do an incredibly good job. I use them the most for virtual staging, and what I mean by that is by putting furniture into a vacant house to show what it would look like lived in. It's phenomenal. I'd recommend you check them out. This is something that you can use in your work to make your work 10 times better and then resell it. So virtual staging is another thing you can add to your repertoire of things that you offer to your clients and you can resell it and earn extra money just doing that. Now here's the age old question. Do I fix it in Photoshop or do I fix it in the camera? Well, I'm always been of the opinion it's better to get the photograph as good as you can in camera and minimize your work in Photoshop. I can't tell you how many times I've wasted hours fixing something that I could have fixed easily had I brought a broom or a rake. So I recommend when you're going out to photograph your properties, take a leaf blower, a broom, a rake, some Windex, and, or some other sp uh, spray cleaners, some rags, some paper towels, so you can clean things up, so you don't have to retouch them in Photoshop. It will save you a tremendous amount of time. And again, efficiency is the key to earning money in photography. So you gotta be efficient, get that thing cleaned up, so you can shoot it right the first time. Here's the thing that everybody wants to know. How much money can I make? Can I make six figures doing this? Yes, it is possible. Not everybody does, but you can do it, and I personally know people who do. So let's start off with some average prices. Now, don't be alarmed by these. These are going to seem extremely low compared to other kinds of commercial photography. But you can earn money doing this. The market dictates what things are worth. There's nothing we can do about it. Now, as far as the photography itself goes, and we're talking about for an average three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car garage, like 1,700-square-foot house. So the photography, it's going to range anywhere from $150 to $275. And these are national averages. I've found these to be pretty close to what the averages are here in, in my area as well. Doing the Matterport work, that commands between $175 and $220.
The drone photos, those get between $100 and $150. Or if you're going to do all three, those typically cost between $300 and $450. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, all right, these numbers seem pretty low, and that's why I've been stressing efficiency all along. Now, if you're going to do the photography alone, you'd have to do 39 a month to make 100000 a year. If you were going to do the Matterport alone, you'd need to do 42 a month to make 100000 a year. If you were doing the drone only, you'd need to do 66 of them a month to earn $100,000 a year. If you were doing all three, you need to do 22 a month. Now, I know that not all of you need to earn $100,000 a year, but I'm using this as a baseline. So if you want to earn $50,000, you just cut these numbers in half. At the average prices, a good, competent photographer can do four to five houses a day. And now that is hard work. That's a pretty full day, but it's possible to do this pretty easily. Now, I know what your objection is going to be. Okay, but Chuck... It's really competitive. There's a lot of photographers in my area. Well, I've got news for you. Everything is competitive. But at the same time, nothing is competitive. Let me explain what I mean. Out of all those photographers that you're competing with, how many of them are lame? How many of them don't know how to sell themselves? How many of them are difficult to work with? How many are lazy? How many of them are unreliable? So think of it this way. If you subtract out all the lame ones, if you subtract out all the ones that don't know how to sell, if you subtract out the ones who are difficult to work with or don't have very good personalities, if you subtract out all the lazy people, all the unreliable people, how many does that really leave? It doesn't leave many at all. And if you just make sure you're not among those people, you're going to stand out. And all you have to do is learn how to sell yourself, and you will prosper. If you don't know how to sell yourself, down at the bottom, I've got a great link, sellingphotographyiseasy.com. It's a short course specifically for photographers that will teach you how to sell your work. I want to show you one of my favorite quotes. Empires are built by people who are no smarter than you. This is a true statement, and as I've gotten older and as I've gotten an opportunity to meet more people that I, I really admire, I found out that they're just like me. It's just that they put in the work. They worked hard. Sure, luck has a little bit to do with it, but... I've found, as I've become more and more successful over the years, that the harder I work, the more lucky I get. So empires are built by people who are no smarter than you. I want you to believe that. You can do it. If you've got questions or if you need help, I want to help you. I've had a very successful career both as a photographer and as a real estate agent. And if I can do it, you can do it feel free to contact me. I will help you if I can. Chuck at chuckvosberg.com is my email address, or you can even text or call me, 727-743-1740, and I will answer the phone. So I hope you got a lot out of this webinar. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'd like you to consider visiting sellingphotographyiseasy.com so you can learn more about learning about selling yourself. And there are some free lessons on there that you can take advantage of right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Chuck Vosberg, and you can do it.